Hey everyone, I hope you're doing well today. In this video, I'm going to be covering trigonometry applications involving bearings and navigation. Keep in mind that while 0 degrees is located on the x-axis for the unit circle, 0 degrees is actually located on the y-axis for navigation. While I know it takes a little bit of getting used to, try to remember that when dealing with navigation, 0 degrees is pointing to the north, 90 degrees is pointing to the east, 180 degrees is pointing to the south, and 270 degrees is to the west. While you don't have to like trig application problems with bearings and navigation, you can go ahead and like this video. To get the most out of this video, click the like button, grab some paper and something to write with, and let's do some math together. For example 1, let's practice drawing and writing bearings. Let's try this first one here, where we have north, 30 degrees, east. Remember that north is located here, east is over here, south is down here, and west is over here. Since we're dealing with navigation and not a unit circle, remember that 0 degrees is located on the y-axis pointing towards the north. Since our first direction is north, we're going to start up here at 0 degrees. And since our second direction is east, we're going to move towards it 30 degrees, which is right about here. This would be the drawing for this bearing. Keep in mind that we start at the north and move 30 degrees in this direction. Now let's try this next one where we have north 60 degrees west. Here I labeled my directions, and let's start at 0 degrees pointing towards the north. Since it says 60 degrees west, we're going to move 60 degrees towards the west direction. That's going to be right about here. Here's our drawing, and we started at north and moved 60 degrees towards west. Now let's try this one. Here are my directions, and this time we're going to start by pointing down towards the south, and we're going to move 70 degrees towards the east. There's our drawing, and to get there, we move 70 degrees from south towards the east direction. Let's just try drawing one more. Here are my directions. Since we're given south first, we'll start down there, and we'll move 80 degrees towards the west direction. That's going to be right about here. To get there, we started in the south and moved 80 degrees towards the west to get our drawing. Now that we've practiced some drawing, let's try writing them. Looking at this first one, you might be tempted to use the 20 degrees that you already see. You have to be careful here because the angle we need to use is actually supposed to be relative to the north and south. Here are the directions, and we need to make sure we're measuring our angle from the north and south axis. While this bearing is 20 degrees from the west, we need to say that it's actually going to be 70 degrees from the north. When writing our bearing, we're always going to start with north or south first. Then we'll write our angle, which is 70 degrees from the north. Then we write whether we're going to the east or west direction. In this problem, we're going towards the west. This would be the bearing for this drawing. Now let's try this one. Here are the directions, and let's think about the bearing relative to the north and south axis. Since it's pointing to the south, we're going to start in the south direction and see how many degrees away this bearing is. Since we know this is 60 degrees from the east direction, we can subtract 90 minus 60 and say this is 30 degrees from the south direction. When writing our bearing, we're going to start by writing north or south, and in this problem, it's going to be south. Our bearing is 30 degrees away from the south direction, so we're going to use the 30 degrees here. And deciding between east and west, we're going to go with east here, since it's pointing towards the left. That's the bearing for this drawing. Now let's look at this one. If you want to pause the video to give it a try on your own, go for it, and then unpause so we can go over it together. While we know it's 40 degrees away from the west direction, let's see how far away it is from the south direction. Since they're complementary angles, or they add up to 90 degrees, we can say that this is going to be 50 degrees, since 40 plus 50 equals 90. Between north and south, we're going to say south here. For the angle measure, we're going to say 50 degrees. And between east and west, we're going to say it's west. And here's one last one. Pause if you'd like to, otherwise I'm just going to go over the answer. Here are the directions, and since we're given 75 degrees here, we can say that this part is going to be 15 degrees, since 15 plus 75 is equal to 90. Between north and south, we're going to choose north here, for the angle measure, we're going to say 15 degrees. And when choosing between east and west, we're going to say east. So when you're dealing with bearings, remember that north, or up, is always going to represent 0 degrees. Always write your angle measure relative to the vertical axis, or the north and south line. Then write your east or west direction last. Having a good understanding of these concepts is going to be really important to help you be successful with the application problems we're about to try. Speaking of application problems, let's give them a try. Now let's look at example two, where we'll look at our first application word problem. Daniel decides to get in his car and go on a road trip and leaves Princeton at a bearing of north 40 degrees east. He somehow finds the straightest road in the world and travels in a straight line for 500 miles. How many miles north and how many miles east has Daniel traveled from Princeton? Let's first identify some important information here. Here we have a bearing, so we're gonna keep that in mind. Traveling in a line makes this problem straightforward, and the 500 miles represents the distance of this line. Before we start trying to even solve the problem, let's start by creating a sketch. Here's Daniel, located in Princeton, and here's north, south, east, and west. If we know his bearing is north 40 degrees east, 
We can draw this straight line to represent the bearing of north 40 degrees east. And since Daniel's traveling 500 miles in this direction, we can label that here. If we know our bearing is 40 degrees, then its complement is 50 degrees. At this point, we can draw a vertical line on the right here to create a right triangle. Just to clean it up a little bit, I redrew the triangle over here, and I decided to use x to represent the horizontal distance and y to represent the vertical distance. Since we have a right triangle, we can use our general trig functions, or SOHCAHTOA. Given our angle of 50 degrees, x is our adjacent side, y is our opposite side, and 500 is the hypotenuse. To write an equation to represent our vertical distance, we can write sine of 50 degrees, which is going to be opposite over hypotenuse, or in this problem, y over 500. And to solve for y, or our vertical distance, we can multiply both sides by 500. These 500s will cross cancel on the right, and we're left with 500 times sine of 50 degrees is equal to y. Plugging this into a calculator and rounding to the nearest whole number, we can say that y, or our vertical distance, is about 383 miles. Therefore, we can say that Daniel traveled about 383 miles in a north direction. Now let's solve for how much Daniel traveled in the east direction. To find this horizontal distance, we're going to have to use another trig function. Since cosine of an angle is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse, we can say that cosine of 50 degrees is equal to x over 500. To solve for x, or this horizontal distance, we can multiply both sides by 500 here, cross-cancel these 500s, and we can say that 500 times cosine of 50 degrees is equal to this horizontal distance. Plugging this into a calculator, we get about 321 miles. It turns out that Daniel traveled 321 miles in the east direction. And in case you want to see if your solutions are reasonable or not, feel free to use the Pythagorean theorem and see if 321 squared plus 383 squared is just about 500 squared. In example three, let's take a look at our second application word problem. Claire spots her puppy Nola directly north from her location. Romy is 400 meters east of Claire and spots Nola at a bearing of north 68 degrees west. The question is, how far is Claire from Nola? Let's first identify what the important information here. First of all, it's important to note that Claire's puppy Nola is north from Claire's location. In addition, it's important to know that Romy is 400 meters east of Claire. And finally, make sure you know that this bearing that we're given is from Romy's location, not Claire's. Let's start by drawing a sketch now. Here's Claire, and here you can see that Nola is north from Claire's location. And here's Romy, 400 meters east of Claire's location. And just for reference, here's our north and south. Since we're given that the bearing is north 68 degrees west, we know that this angle right here is going to be 68 degrees. Since we know this is its complement, 90 degrees minus 68 degrees is going to be 22 degrees. Now that we see the big picture, let's redraw this triangle with a little bit less going on. Here's a simplified version of the diagram we drew, and I decided to label the vertical distance from Claire to Nola as the letter D. From the perspective of our angle 22 degrees, 400 is going to represent our adjacent side, and the letter D is going to represent the opposite side. To solve for D, or the distance from Claire to Nola, we're going to have to use the tangent function here. Since the tangent of an angle is opposite over adjacent, we can say that tangent of 22 degrees is equal to d over 400. To solve for d, we're going to multiply both sides by 400. These 400s are going to cross cancel on the right, and we have 400 times tangent of 22 degrees is equal to this distance. Plugging this into a calculator, we should get that the distance is about 162 meters. Therefore, we can say that Claire is about 162 meters away from her puppy Nola. And just in case you wanted to find the distance between Romy and Nola, you could either use the Pythagorean theorem or take cosine of 22 degrees. In example four, let's take a look at our third application word problem. Zoe gets on her private jet from Jolly Rancher City and is headed towards Starburst Town at a bearing of 100 degrees. The distance between these two cities is approximately 2,472 miles. How far north and how far west is Jolly Rancher City relative to Starburst Town? The question is, if Zoe is to return on her private jet from Starburst Town to Jolly Rancher City, at what bearing should she travel? First, it's important to know the bearing is 100 degrees. Second, it's important to know that these two cities are 2,472 miles apart. Once again, let's start by drawing a sketch and then see what we can solve. I'm going to start by putting Jolly Rancher City right here, and here's our north, south, east, and west to give you some perspective. Since we're told that the bearing is 100 degrees, that means we're going to start with 0 degrees at the north location, and move 100 degrees in this direction. This represents our bearing here. Since we know the distance between the two cities, I'm going to label that along this line. If we know that our bearing is 100 degrees here, then to complete this semicircle, which should add up to 180 degrees, this angle here should be 80 degrees. Next, I'm just going to draw this horizontal line so we have a right triangle here. Cleaning this up a bit, here's the same triangle, but I decided to label the horizontal distance as x and the vertical distance as y. 
Since we have a right triangle, we can use our trig functions and use SOHCAHTOA. I'm going to start by solving for the horizontal distance. To solve for the horizontal distance or the west distance, we can use our sine function because sine of any angle is equal to the opposite over hypotenuse. In this particular problem, we can say that sine of 80 degrees is equal to x over 2472. To solve for x, we're going to multiply both sides by 2472. These will cancel out on the right, and we know that x is equal to 2472 multiplied by the sine of 80 degrees. Putting this into a calculator, we find that x is about 2434. This is how far west Jolly Rancher City is from Starburst Town. Now let's set up an equation to solve for y, or the north distance. To solve for y, we're going to use the cosine function because cosine of an angle is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. Therefore, we can write cosine of 80 degrees is equal to y over 2472. Just like earlier, to solve for our unknown, we'll multiply both sides by 2472. These will cancel out, and we can say that 2472 multiplied by cosine of 80 degrees is equal to the north distance. Putting this into a calculator, we find that y is about 429. That means that Jolly Rancher City and Starburst Town are about 494 miles north and south of each other. Now that we got Zoe from Jolly Rancher City to Starburst Town, let's find her bearing if she's returning from Starburst Town back to Jolly Rancher City. Here's our triangle again, but instead of starting at Jolly Rancher City, we're going to be starting at Starburst Town. Remember that we knew that this over here was 80 degrees, so since all three angles of this triangle have to add up to 180, we can subtract and find out that this is going to be 10 degrees. Since we're starting from Starburst Town, here's our north, south, east, and west, as well as our bearings, to help give you some perspective. To find the bearing of Starburst Town to Jolly Rancher City, we'll start at 0 degrees and work our way clockwise to get to that green line. From here to here, that's already 90 degrees. From here to here, that makes it 180. From here to here, this makes 270. And for this last little piece, that adds up to 280 degrees. On Zoe's return trip from Starburst Town to Jolly Rancher City, her bearing will be 280 degrees. At this point, it's important to remind you that the bearing going from one place to another place isn't necessarily going to be the same bearing on the return trip. In example 5, let's take a look at our fourth application word problem. Rowan is on her private yacht and leaves port at 12 p.m. and heads due west at 20 knots or 20 nautical miles per hour. At 2 p.m., the yacht changes course to north 54 degrees west. We need to find Rowan's bearing and distance from the port at 3 p.m. First, it's important to know that we're starting at 12 p.m., and I'll keep my units in knots for this problem. This time of 2 p.m. is also important because it lets us know how much time has gone by since 12. This bearing over here seems important, and this time over here lets us know when we're ending. You know the drill, let's draw a sketch now. Here's our starting location at 12 p.m. And since Rowan is traveling due west at 20 knots or 20 miles per hour, she's going to end up traveling 40 knots in 2 hours. If 20 knots represented 20 nautical miles per hour, then if 2 hours go by, that equals 40 knots. We know that Rowan changed directions after 2 hours, and we know that her bearing was north 54 degrees west. Putting that right over here, we have 54 degrees from the north axis. And here I drew a line connecting our start to our end point and labeling it D. Here's a slightly less messy version of the same diagram. Since it's going to be difficult to solve this problem without any right triangles, let's try to draw one here. I'm going to start by drawing this vertical distance A over here, and drawing this horizontal distance of B. Since we know that this is a right angle over here, and our bearing was 54 degrees, we can subtract the 54 degrees from the 90 degrees to find out this angle here is 36 degrees. And finally, we have a triangle that we can actually do something with. Here's that right triangle that we just created. Let's use some of our trig functions to solve for A and B. To solve for A, we can write that sine of 36 degrees is equal to opposite over hypotenuse, or A over 20. And multiplying both sides by 20, we can get that A is equal to 2 times sine of 36 degrees. Now let's write an equation to solve for side B. We can write that cosine of 36 degrees is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse, or B over 20. Multiplying both sides by 20, we're going to get that B is equal to 20 times cosine of 36 degrees. Now let's look at the whole big right triangle that we have formed here. To find out how long side D is, we're going to have to find out this angle measure over here. To do that, we can set up the equation tangent of x degrees is equal to opposite over adjacent, or in this case, a over b plus 40. Since we know that this a here is equal to 20 times sine of 36 degrees, and our b down here is equal to 20 times cosine of 36 degrees, let's substitute those expressions in to write a new equation. We can write that tangent of x is equal to 20 times sine of 36 degrees over 20 times cosine of 36 degrees plus 40. Go ahead and plug this whole thing into a calculator, and you should get about 0 
Now remember, to find the value of x or the angle measure, we can take the arc tangent of 0 0.20925 and that's going to give us our angle. Putting this into a calculator, you'll find that this angle is about 11.8 degrees. This 11.8 degrees represents this angle right over here. And to figure out rho n's bearing, we can take this right angle here and subtract 11.8 degrees to get this bearing here of about 72.8 degrees. We're going to say it's north 78.2 degrees west. This is going to be the bearing. And finally, let's find the value of d, which represents the distance from Rowan's starting location to our ending location. Looking at the big right triangle we were just referring to, we can use our trig function and say sine of x degrees, which is opposite over hypotenuse, is going to be a over d. Since we already found out that x is 11.8 degrees, and we also know that a is equal to 20 times sine of 36 degrees, we can make some substitutions and write sine of 11.8 degrees is equal to 20 times sine of 36 degrees over d. Multiplying both sides by d, we get d times sine of 11.8 degrees is equal to 20 times sine of 36 degrees. And finally, to isolate d, we can divide both sides by sine of 11.8 degrees. We can write that d equals 20 times sine of 36 degrees over sine of 11.8 degrees. Plugging this into a calculator, we find that d is about 57.4. That means from 12 p.m. to 3 p.m., Rowan is now 57.4 knots away from her original location. This problem was a little bit trickier because you had to think outside the box, or in this case, think outside the triangle, to solve this problem. After creating this triangle with side lengths a, b, and 20, we were able to use right triangles as well as some trig functions to solve for some missing lengths. Whenever you're feeling overwhelmed or just stuck, see if you can create right triangles and use your basic trig functions to get you a little bit further. As you keep on practicing, I promise it's going to get easier. And that brings us to example 6, where we're going to do our fifth and final application word problem. Zach is running in a cross-country race and he sees a pond. He realizes it's against the rules, but wonders how much faster his time would be if he could just run straight through the pond to the finish line. Basically, he's daydreaming if he can run on water or use some sort of jetpack to get to the finish line. The bearing from Zach to the finish line is north 32 degrees west. If Zach runs 50 meters in a straight line along the legal course towards a tree, the bearing from the tree to the finish line is north 68 degrees west. We're going to have to find the bearing from Zach to the tree, then find the distance Zach would have to run if he could run on water or use a jetpack to get across the pond. Here's a sketch of the scenario that we're going to use to solve this problem. This bearing from Zach to the finish line is important, as well as this 50 meters, which is the distance between Zach and the tree. And finally, the bearing from the tree to the finish line is also important information. Let's sketch a more detailed diagram now. Here's the right triangle. And since we know the bearing from Zach and the tree, I'm going to draw these north-south lines to give us some perspective here. If we know the bearing from Zach to the finish line is north 32 degrees west, we can go from the north line and go 32 degrees and that's right over here. Since we have a 90 degree angle here, we know that we can take 90 degrees and subtract 32 degrees to find that this angle right here is 58 degrees. Since our north and south lines are parallel to each other, the 50 meter line acts as a transversal, so we can use alternate interior angles and say that this angle right here is also 58 degrees. And since we're told the bearing from the tree to the finish line is north 68 degrees west, we can draw that right over here from the north line and see that this angle right here is 68 degrees. Since all three of these angles are here on a straight line, we know that they have to add up to 180 degrees. To find a third missing angle, we can take 180 degrees and subtract the 68 degrees and the 58 degrees that we already know, and that equals 54 degrees, which I'm going to label right inside here. Now that we know some more information about this right triangle, I'm going to clean it up a bit. Here's that same triangle with the 54 degrees labeled, the distance from Zach to the tree, and D representing the distance from Zach to the finish line. We actually already found out the bearing from Zach to the tree. That bearing is going to be the angle measure from here to here, and we established earlier that that was 58 degrees. We were basically able to do that because we knew the bearing from Zach to the finish line was 32 degrees on this other side. Since these angles are complementary, they have to add up to 90 degrees. Seeing that we have 58 degrees, we can write the bearing as north 58 degrees east. Now let's look at this triangle one more time and see if we can actually find the distance from Zach to the finish line. Using our tangent function, we can say that tangent of 54 degrees is going to be opposite over adjacent, or in this case, d over 50. Multiplying both sides by 50, we can write that 50 times tangent of 54 degrees is equal to the distance. Plugging this into a calculator, we find that d is equal to about 68.8. If Zach is able to cut through that pond, he only has about 69 meters to go. And that wraps up this video on trigonometry application problems involving bearing and navigation. If you found this video helpful, please consider giving it a like and letting me know in the comment section below. As always, keep up the good work, and I'll see you in the next one.